Hi, this is Conrad Zimmerman with Fish Shark Marketing. Do you like this show? Why not help support it with a small monthly contribution? For less than the adoption fees on a three-legged dog, you can commit yourself to this pitiable group of miscreants. Just visit patreon.com slash fistshark or click the big Patreon button at fistshark.com for more details. And thanks for listening. I, I don't think we have any option. We've got to, we got to demote him now. Like this is, it's been fun, but it's gone too far. Are you sure? I was, I was really enjoying him in his position. I mean, I was against it at first. I promote Craig, but after I realized that he was really good at a certain part of the job. I was very much on board, ecsta- hilariously on board with him. No, he's great for a certain specific purpose. No argument there. Uh, but he can't be handling clients all on his own. I mean, you've seen what's happened. Yeah, yeah, I saw. I'm, I'm not happy about it. I'm not happy about it at all. I've, I, I put some poison in his coffee this morning as punishment. You put poison in his coffee every morning. That's not a punishment. Yeah, I'm mean, I'm starting to suspect he enjoys it. I mean, why would he keep drinking the coffee otherwise? So he was promoted uh, for a very specific reason, though, and it and it was working. Uh, can you catch me up a little bit? Yeah, it was actually working out really well for a while. Uh, you know, promote him to a marketing executive, finally get him out of the intern drudgery. I feel he's earned it, and at first it was working out just fine. You know, and I know. There was some jealousy among among our tier from people who didn't want to see him at our level, but we got him some starter clients and it was going okay. Well, and they were clients nobody else really wanted to deal with. Ultimately, that was the deal. I think I helped that, and maybe I was giving him a little extra help there by knowingly signing up new clients uh, that no one wanted and, and giving them to him. Um, the, the pack of rabid dogs, that was... That was my idea. I, I borrowed some off day and some of the three-legged ones, you know, the really vicious ones, uh, and gave him a contract. And then it was Craig's job to go and meet them a lot. And the, the, the dogs, they wanted representation for what? Um, they're mostly for biting Craig. It's stipulated in their contracts that uh, their, their primary career objective was to tear Greg's flesh apart and they did and I laughed and took photographs and Craig uh, being an executive he was getting paid but I, I, I wasn't sure if he was getting paid money I'd heard some talk that it wasn't financial payment in it his was, case yeah, yeah it was mostly fluff and feathers but it was an upgrade from his previous payment of punches and poisonings and to be honest, because I like him, I threw in the poisonings for free anyway. But at this point, I'm not sure if he can be trusted. I, I think he did a fine job with the uh, with the dog client, but he uh, his attitude has changed. Yeah, yeah. He was so grateful at first when when we walked in there and said, "Craig, you're getting a promotion. Take off that Pantera shirt and for God's sake, put on a suit and tie. For God's sake, you can have one of mine." The one lined with pins. And he was so happy, he put that suit on, he barely cried when the pins dug into his skin. It was a good look for him. It was a good look for him. You could tell how happy he was, that just the, he was all tooth. I mean, just, just, you might even call it a grimace uh, of joy. Yes, yes. Just tight-lipped and just so happy. He had that steely, pained expression that a fish shark executive should be proud of. And he did a good job while he cared. But to be honest, after I signed him up to represent the angry bee's nest, he seemed to turn. Yeah. I think he let the power go to his head a little bit. Then it was all of a sudden, I don't want to go back to the angry beehive, Jim. I don't want to go back there. I'm allergic to bee stings. It's like, oh, 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 okay, this client's beneath you now. Yeah, you're somehow better than the angry beehive. 
you had some success with some rabid dogs and all of a sudden you think insects aren't worth your time. Well, let me tell you something, Craig. They are worth your fucking time. And you get out there and you talk with them. Absolutely. Be very expressive. Speak with your hands. Oh, no. I don't want to go into that building you set fire to. Well, tough shit. That's your new client. I set fire to it this morning and signed it up for a three-year contract. Get in there. And breathe in. Deep. That's what it says in the contract. Craig? He actually came into my office and complained about the leeches that he attached to his dick. Uh, He said he didn't feel it was effective. He felt as though our idea uh, wasn't, in fact, uh, going to get results. Well, (sighs) I'm sorry, but all of us have to go through a dick leeching at some point in our careers. Now, okay... For most of us, that dick leeching is metaphorical. It's it's a hypothetical dick leeching. Just because he took the literal one, that's not our fault. We've all gone through it in spirit. We all had the choice. We all had the option. Which wasn't bad. Yeah, no, I, I kind of liked it. Th- this is just the kind of minefield you have to navigate when you're a fish shark executive. And don't get me started on his complaints about the minefield. Not the metaphorical mi- the, the The literal oh, minefield. Oh, the very literal minefield. Yeah. 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 I think that, that seems to be his problem with a lot of these things, is um, the literalism of his jobs. You know, oh, I don't want to go out of the frying pan into the fire. That's what it says in your contract. It's what you agreed to when you signed on the client, Craig. Yes. Well, I mean, when Fish Shark signed on the client but when, and, when and I, gave you yes, the client. when I forced you to, to sign on the client. Yeah. I wasn't going to do it. You think I want to represent a toxic landfill? Absolutely not. Not only is it dangerous, it's it's a really, really difficult client because how do you make a nuclear waste facility you look good. How do you yeah. do that? I mean, I could have done it if I wanted, but I got my hands full with Phil Collins. Mm-hmm, He's coming mm-hmm. up in welts again. I, I will admit, I think Craig had the right idea in terms of how to make the landfill's public image improve uh, by focusing on its exceptional safety record and security uh, measures. Um, and, uh, and then, and then he took on the electric fence as a client. Yes, yes. Um, Now that's where it all seemed to really go downhill. And that's where his, his bad attitude up to that point came home to roost. Right. Now we didn't take on the electric fence. This was his idea. That was the issue. He seemed to think that he could think for himself. Mm hmm. Never a good idea. And so then he got embroiled in this entire situation and then did nothing to contain it. Did absolutely nothing to contain it. We know that he introduced that electric fence and that landfill. Yes. Like, yes. He, he put two and two together there. It was a meeting of irresistible forces. It was Something was bound to happen. I mean, sparks were going to fly. He wasn't keeping an eye on them. And that electric fence and that landfill full of toxic drums got to fucking... And the next thing you know, all the magazines know, right? It's on the front page of the sun. And, and, you know, I know, sure, sure, sure. They have a solar energy bias. I get that. Of course they do. uh, But at the same time, you know, you knew they were gunning for any opportunity to wag a finger at nuclear. And now we got a sex scandal. Exactly. Just, Just fresh right up for them. Now, look, a good sex scandal at the right time? There's nothing wrong with that. No, it can do wonders to boost a flagging career, but that's the thing. That toxic landfill was at the beginning of its career. A sex scandal that soon, that's all it's going to be known. It's not going to get on Colbert now. No, no, it's forever tainted. I mean, I could maybe, like, dig up a few drums and get them to pursue solo, but other than that, it's 16 in a bed rump with an electric fence just is not going to do it any favours. No. And that's got that's on Craig, who couldn't control his clients, who couldn't then control the story, who let an electric fence and a pile of toxic waste drums bang and now it's splashed all over the sun, fulfilling the agenda of big solar. It, 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 we have no choice. We we can't we I, can't keep I him. I get it. I mean I, I It's too dangerous. It was fun. It was it was a lot of fun. You <laughs> know, I'd I'd plant an entire week around introducing him and reintroducing him to the angry beehive 
And now I've got to let that go because the more we talk about it, the angrier I'm getting. And I, I, I truly believe that, oh, I mean, at the very least, at the very least, we've got his severance pay. Right. His very literal severance pay. He didn't need all of those toes. Okie dokie, time for the annual uh, financial report from Fistjark Farms. Uh, the Gerber Baby Rebellion was put down. Unfortunately, uh, there's only two left. So we're, oh. we're trying to get them breeding like pandas. And it's it's touch and go. It's early days, but we'll see, we'll see where it goes. In, in, in more important news, the Grudge Farm business is booming yeah that oh that's great because grudges are really really easy to produce they, they take minimal care and people love them people can't get enough of grudges in fact the city of boston uh wants a job lot of them to serve as traffic control oh oh that'd be great that'd be great because i could see that working it's not like you need uh, uh, a crossing guard to do any real movement i mean you no, just no just set them there in the middle of the crosswalk and and let it let it point it'll just point where it needs to go well the, the two things that grudges are best at making noise and pointing and that's yeah. all you need for a uh, we've already started trials we've actually set one up on main street it stands there at the crossroads just going <laughs> and pointing not in any particular direction. There's been a few traffic accidents, but they're cheap. So we but we may need to work on, on, on training a little bit. But yeah, yeah, otherwise... yeah. Yeah, I mean, it would help if the grudges understood cars and city planning and people. Right. But other than that, the mayor's pleased with them. Mayor Dooley cannot get enough of them. He's a big fan of grudges. I, I mean, to be, you know, between us... He's thinking about getting one as a pet. Oh, they make great pets. That, They're a lot of fun. It surprised me. I couldn't see it at first. But it, it's like they say, it's not till you get a little grudgy home that you understand why people love keeping them. as They, they truly are man's best friend. They are. Well, I mean, they're not wife and kid's best friend. You know? No, no, you know? no, no. Keep them away from your family. Actually, I would, I would kind of question... I question the wisdom of of of, uh, of having anyone in your life if you're going to have a grudge as a pet. With a grudge, I mean, you always run the risk of it killing everyone in the house. Yeah, yeah, right? Min- minimal, minimal. You know what they say: grudges don't kill people; their grudges do. I- I've been uh, trying to bone up on my grudge science, the grudge logic, and uh, I-, I was wondering if you could answer a couple of questions because oh. I want to. Help sell the, sell the product. So they're, so they're ghosts. They're they're black and white ghosts. Some meow like cats. Some just uh, kind of uh, let out a guttural, uh, sore throat sort of moan yeah. or creak. Yeah. Uh, the meowing ones are the you know they're rarer, harder to breed, but they do they simply make the best pets. But they do uh, mm-hmm. they do want to kill you sometimes if you do a, a thing and you. You don't know what the thing is until you've already done it? Is that how it works? Well, here's the thing. I mean, you know, they said that same thing about monkey dogs when we introduced them into the household. Oh, monkey dogs kill people because they get confused and they don't know what they are and they think they shouldn't be. But that's just without the proper training. You know, any animal left unattended and untrained is dangerous. A hungry dog will bite your hand off. A hungry monkey dog will eat your face. But you just... Little love, little care. You know, the, the farms we have um, out in the top field is very humanely run. You treat the grudge well, and the grudge spares most of your life. You lose a little bit of your soul if you're around them for too long, but the just the bitch you're not using. You know, I mean, I've hardly got any left. Ultimately, I think one thing, as as the grudge business booms and gets more popular, one thing we want to really point out is that they're not just for killing people. No, no. Some people do use them that way, you know, mostly for home defense. Yeah. Someone breaks into your house, they might get grudged. And that's just a risk you take when you're a home invader, you know. But 
I feel that the grudge laws we have in place right now are adequate. Yeah, I don't think it's necessary for us to be legislating who mm, can mm, and cannot mm, have mm. a grudge any further than already is, you know? Yes. If you're a violent felon, yeah. you shouldn't be able to get your hands on a grudge. I think no. that that's reasonable. Those pushing for more grudge control are really just taking it too far. When it comes right down to it, if you've got a bad guy with a grudge, who's going to stop them? A good guy with a grudge. That's right. That's right. So, Paulson, do you have any more questions? Actually, do you mind if I call you Paul? Uh, why would you want to call me Paul? It's, I knew a Paulson, and he was like Crystal Maybach, Diamonds on Your Timepiece, Jet Planes, Islands, Tigers on a Gold Leash. Well, yeah, so in that case, sure, you, you can call me Paul. But if they're in the shower, the grudges, and yeah. you're trying to uh, get clean, and uh, you find yourself uh, covered in uh, black sort of uh inky death-like hair uh soup is that can we spin that to sell them or is that just something we want to hide people find it adorable it's a little gross it's a little grody but cats leave hairballs on your carpet and sometimes a grudge will cover you in inky black oil while you're taking a shower. It's it's one of those things that the a little house training can curb. You can curtail it a little bit, but you know, spare the rod and spoil the grudge a little bit. You know, they 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 learn more from knowing when they've disappointed you. You know, you just got to be very sort of stern with them. Like here are the rules: if I'm late for work, don't cover me in inky black oil. This is a whole new world for me. This is pretty exciting. I, going to the farm itself and seeing the grudges uh, in their natural habitat. Oh, yes. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, fornicating and, and mating was, was quite a surprise. I didn't expect to see or hear the things that I saw and heard on that day. But I think it's got a lot of... Just, uh, be, mar- just be glad you had your headphones on. Because, I mean, that, that dampens about 70% of the sound. and You, you don't want to hear it anywhere near 80%. Well, that being said, uh, with the right equipment, uh, I think maybe we could parlay this into this sort of a, you know, the um, the dog whisperer and that that man from uh, another planet who trains cats to not scratch a couch. We could maybe find uh, after the grudge pet business takes off, perhaps we could get into the grudge training business, the mm. the grudge whispering or the grudge kind of guttural moaning or however i've got to say as a grudge lover if if i wasn't doing this job i feel like grudge whispering would be like my dream career i would love to train grudges get them to do tricks you know just get a whole pack of grudges just running around eating pancakes you know that kind of thing um i i would love that i would i would I like that let's let's look into that because obviously um the more grudges that get sold the more people are going to want other things you know we we're selling grudge bowls and grudge houses um up and down the the, the city this is getting me really excited it, could we could we get some for the office i mean would that be would that be <gasps> a, uh, some sort of uh, breach of contract or um conflict of interest or do you oh, think we could... i would love a little grudge running around the office Pointing at people and croaking or meowing and drinking out the toilet and, you know, pushing people down elevator shafts. Uh, I, oh, Conrad, I don't say we can, get, can we get one? I don't know, guys. I, I I don't think the senior partners will mind necessarily, but, uh, I mean, if they were to come down and see it, we could get in, you know, we could get in some shit. And I, I don't know if it's the best idea. I'll take care of it. I'll feed it every day. I mean, how many QA testers do we have? Fine, fine, Jim, fine. We can get a grudge for the office. Yes! Yes! I'm gonna call it... Grudge! Yeah, I understand in hindsight it wasn't a great idea. But I really... I I thought we'd have a, a bit more time. I thought we'd get away with it for longer. I just... Yeah, I thought maybe we... I just feel like we didn't go to the right effort. Like, because we went to a lot of effort here. Like, this was not a small feat. It was one of the hardest projects I've ever worked on. Yeah, it was a big, big, big deal. But I just feel like we went in the wrong direction. Yeah, I mean, the the nucleus of the idea was good. 
self-driving car. Self-driving car is a great idea. A lot of people working on it, a lot of money heading in that direction. And I'm all about getting us into the self-driving car. Yeah, the, the, the foundation of the idea was solid. The marketing of the idea was brilliant. Oh my god, yes. Our appearance at the Detroit Auto Show was amazing. We got a Super Bowl commercial, went over very well, went viral. People love seeing Christopher Lee in anything, no matter what state is in. But uh, but I think Fish Shark Engineering really uh, dropped the ball here. Yeah, I mean, if I had to blame anyone, and I do because I don't want to get in trouble for my own idea, it'd be Fish Shark Engineering. Can we just dial this back a little bit? Uh, I- I've seen the car from a distance. Uh, it seemed to drive very well. It looks great, doesn't it, from a distance? Yeah, it looked good. It worked. It stopped before it hit a thing. Uh, I, I, I'm not seeing the issue. And, and yeah. again, like you said, the Christopher Lee commercial, fantastic. His face uh, uh, against the dashboard, mm-hmm. sleeping. Pat and Oswalt doing a fantastic impersonation voiceover. Extremely convincing, yes. Uh, I was ready. I wanted mm-hmm. to be that sleeping Christopher Lee with the voice of Pat and Oswalt in that you go. Uh and you're telling me now that it's not working, that it's not selling? Uh, well, I mean, it had a great, great sales on the first day. You know, the stuff hit the car lots in Boston. Pretty much sold out. Uh, the only problem is, is that once you get in it, it's... How do I, how do I describe this without, without putting any blame on myself? Um, the cars do self-drive. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it technically, technically it's self If you own the car, you don't have to drive it. Right. You made a purchase of a car that drives without your need to be behind the wheel driving. Yeah. Okay, so maybe it's not the the, the mechanical solution everybody thought it was going to be. No, 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 no. I mean, I'll, I'll just put this out there now, right? It wasn't my fault that... The self-driving part of the car was a man painted to resemble the upholstery of the car sat in the driver's seat doing the driving. Yes, I had that idea. Fishark Engineering didn't have to make it. And yes, we did communicate to them this idea. Yeah, 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 we, we communicated it. I mean, I may have said something like this. You know, I may have said drunkenly in a bar, ha ha, wouldn't it be funny to combine the concept of the chauffeur with indentured servitude? But I never forced them to find those very leathery young men and paint them in shades of of beige and brown and black. So, it's a human driving a car. Contractually, legally, He's part of the car. We prefer to to think of them as uh, as sort of the brains of the vehicle, you know? Yeah, like a brain, like like a robot with a human's brain. Except in this case, it's it's a it's a painted dude in a car with a human's brain. Yeah, yeah, fundamentally. Although, again, on paper, contractually, he has a car's brain and eyes. He has eyes, human eyes. They're the car's eyes, technically. And so so. It, you sit you sit on the man uh and he drives a car can he see over i mean how does he the, this he can is, drive this with, is with where sitting on him this is yeah. where we hit a stumbling block um i thought we'd we'd get away with it for longer like at least until the warranty ran out but within 20 minutes of sale a lot of people realized hey i'm sitting on a dude yeah yeah, I think one one issue is when some some of the the again when the cars said, "Move your fucking head, I can't see." I you know I don't know why I don't know why I didn't this didn't occur to me, like yeah, it, yeah. it should have seen this coming. It, it the the problem the issue with this approach it seems so clear now, right? With hindsight. Well, yeah, I mean, I I didn't imagine that twenty percent of our fleet would have erections when people sat right, on them. Right, right. People, people don't buy a car and expect it to then 
harass them. Now that I look at it, I, I totally get it. I know what we should yeah, have done. Yeah, yeah. We should have found some way to sort of separate the driver's seat from the rest of the vehicle. You know, mm-hmm. like it making an enclosure of some kind to prevent yeah. people from from sitting on that. That's a sealed area. Right, right. Yeah. Let the car do the driving. Don't worry about the driver's seat. And don't worry about the smell. Colostomy bags is the other issue. That That is an issue. That we needed. They shouldn't just go. We could tell people to just not sit in the driver's seat and we could we could let the person who's driving the car... Just get out of the car and eat and and Oh, this is America. This is America. You don't tell an American where to sit in their own car. Not without gates. We'd we'd have to come up with a complicated gating, rigging, and trap system to stop them to stop them going in the driver's seat and make it feel like it's their decision. Like a like a like a mouse maze, like a mouse trap kind of. Like a mouse trap, yeah. I mean that wouldn't that wouldn't stop the interiors of the car smelling of piss and shit, unfortunately. Which, again, is my issue. And the, the other problem is, is that we found a lot of people in today's society have a, a, a poor view of, um, um, what's, what do they call it? Slavery, I guess is what they called it. But isn't that what we're doing a bit? I mean, we're Well, right, them. yeah, that's what I'm saying, is that, you know, once they discover the person... I've tried to explain this. I, I explained this on the news broadcast earlier today, because apparently this is newsworthy now. Okay, whatever. I mean, it's... Uh, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's not like there's an election going on, for char. Yeah, as, as successful as our appearance at the Detroit Auto Show was, where the fuck was local news broadcaster X that week? Now they're all calling us because, yeah. oh, we've got bodies in the driver's seat and they smelled like poo. And as I explained to them, it's not slavery, it's serfdom. There totally are two different. very distinct totally things Totally different. There. People today don't understand what serfdom is. That's the difference, really. Yeah, each one of them's given a plot of land to till for the Baron. These leather, these leather boys till the land when they're not driving the car. When they're not driving the car, the leathery boys till the land. You know, for the local Baronhood of Boston. And that's on the up and up. That's legal. That's legal. That's the law. Did you see me in jail? Not yet. Nope. Not right now. I'll tell you what, I won't go down for this one. So what, did we take the car off the market? Or are we, how are we going to... We're have... issuing a recall, and, 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 you know, not that many actually got sold, thankfully. No, we didn't make that many. We only had five cars. So all five cars are back, uh, recalled? The, yeah, the customers are quite happy to, to give them back. We're having a little bit of difficulty getting Jerry Seinfeld to give his up, but... Uh, oh, did Jerry yeah. keep his? Yeah, yeah, I, th- I think he kept his. A sale's a sale. Fist Shark Marketing is Jim Sterling, Conrad Zimmerman, and Paul Sincere. Theme music by Ben Rama. Additional music by Alizar Chand. Our editor is Alan Smithy. Get more episodes and learn how to support the show at FistShark.com. Follow us on Twitter at FistShark for more of our exploits. Complaints can be forwarded via email to FistSharkMarketing at AOL.com. And remember, everyone has a destiny, just not a meaningful one. Goodbye. Goodbye.